Come, now is the time to worship. Jesus receives our praise. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time. God, worshiping him, praising him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna.
make this a prayer. Heal my heart. Heal my heart and make it clean. Open up my eyes to the things I see. Show me how to love like you and love me. Break my heart. Break my heart. It's a beautiful thing that when they cried, Hosanna, save us, he was coming to save his people. And that's what the name Jesus means. He will save his people from their sins. Amen? Amen. Wow. Yes. What a great God we serve. We do. The, the story of Jesus is the most epic story in history. And one day, one day, it's going to be fully revealed Amen. by every soul and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. To the glory of God the Father. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the dark, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Yes, thank you. Who could it Say spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me. His. I am His own.
the promise your buried body begin to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me then came the
This particular song is shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord like the hills and the mountains. Shout to the Lord like he has redeemed you from death. Shout to the Lord for salvation. Shout to the Lord because he's the one that breaks the iron bars down and lets the captives go free. Shout to the Lord, all ye earth. Shout to the Lord, ye mountains. Shout to the Lord, ye oceans. Let the oceans roar and declare that our God reigns and his kingdom is coming to this earth.
lift your hands to the Lord. Give him glory. Exalt his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I just want to continue to worship God one day. We're not going to ever have to stop, amen. Amen. But you know, we're still down here. We have to worship and we have to hear the word of God because we are in a world that's fallen and we need to exalt and build one another up. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Julie, for sharing that. And Brother Ken, if you'd like to come forward. Y'all can be seated. We're going to continue in worship with the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Grace Community Church. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. You look like you're looking good out there. You sound like you sounded good out there. All the praise and worship to our God this morning. Glory to the Father. As Roosevelt said, I hate for it to end, right? Praise and worship can go on for on and on. You know, if you're feeling bad, feeling down, you get to giving God the glory and the praise. It just seems like whatever was going on is lifted off of you. You know, God is so good and he loves us so much. We have so much to be thankful and grateful for. Well, welcome Grace Community Church again this morning. We're so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. And to guests that we haven't seen in a while, we're glad that you're back visiting with us today. And to our online guests, we're so glad that you've chosen to tune in with us this morning. We hope that you have been blessed as far as we have been blessed this morning. Amen. We have a few announcements for you this morning. We have our drive through Candy Palooza on October the 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. Excited about that, y'all. Look over here to my left. We have a need for what? More candy. Amen. We, look. Twice, three times as much as we have here. Now, I know some of you bought it. You just forgot to bring it. You know, bring it. Put it up here on the stage. And I know you'll, you'll have it on the day that it really counts. When we need to come out and, what, decorate our vehicles and have our costumes on. And, and you know, not something to scare the children, though, right? Because <laughs> we want to be a blessing. Amen. We witness and we pray for every family that comes out, you know, and the kids enjoy this every year. The community enjoys it. So we always have an awesome time. So y'all do bring candy. We really need it. We really need it. Your assistance. And also we have our Samaritan Purse Christmas Child uh, operation. And the deadline is coming soon. Uh, we have a lot of stuff laid out on the tables out there already that it seemed like they're working on it this weekend so still bring your donations y'all those those things that we pack up and we send out those change lives you know those kids are so happy to receive those all over the world where they go to so let's make sure that we participate and bring those things amen excuse me amen as pastor said they get the gospel presented and we're a part of that. Amen. 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 And then also on Wednesday night, <laughs> another opportunity to eat our fellowship uh, dinner, you know, uh, bring some. And, it, and it's every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So come and be a part of that. And I know we were doing themes. I don't know if we're still doing themes, theme dinners, but just, just come and be a part of it. And if you have skills, you can cook. Cook something and bring it. We'll eat it. Amen. Yeah. We have an awesome time. All right. And then also I wanted to say uh, we had a card from James Brooks, Brother James Brooks here, who sent us a card and just wanted to say uh, he missed us. And amen. We miss him. He missed us, he and his wife, and they're looking forward to coming back and being with us. So I just want to mention, shout out to James Brooks and Angel this morning. And now it is the time that we're getting ready to enjoy the word that uh, God has given our pastor, Dr. Right. Ben Wilkins, right. to share with us. Okay, thank you, Brother Ken. And thank you for everybody who's here today. God bless you, man. And it's, it, it's so good to just gather in God's house and with God's people and praise Him. Thank you. You're, you'll be a better person for it this week, and God will lift you up through it. So let's, let's pray, y'all. We are, we are in our series, uh, 
called when heaven shows up in the real world. And that's what it's about, y'all. That's what we're doing. We're inviting heaven into our lives where God literally comes into our lives and does something, makes a difference in our lives as we follow him. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you that you do enter into this world, come and show up right in our very own world. We thank you and praise you, and we pray that what we do and say the rest of the time here today would honor you, and Lord, that it would help us to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, y'all, we're talking about today where the walls came down from, you know, remember that story about the walls falling down at Jericho? Y'all, Jericho is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the world. It's been continually inhabited that we know of for 9,000 years. So that's a old, that's a old city. Uh, you remember the story, though, when the Israelites came straight out of Egypt to the Promised Land, the first city they were going to take was, was Jericho. And Jericho was a strong, fortified city with high walls to protect it. You know, there were no... There weren't countries back in those days. So every, every city just protected itself. So they had these high walls around. I mean, when you were roaming around in the desert out there, there wasn't big, a sign saying, you are now leaving Canaan and into Egypt and, and the welcome center is up there on the right. And all of that, that was, you just roamed around and came up on a city and, and that city had to protect itself. And so... God told them they could have this land, but they were going to have to go out and take it. And he was going to be with them, but they're going to take it. Uh, so each city was, was falling along them, but, you know, God told them to go in and, and take that land. Now, uh, you might be thinking, well, isn't it, isn't it wrong? I mean, you know, hold up just a minute. Isn't it wrong of God to just, just tell him to go Tell those people, just go take that city and, and run all those people out of it? Well, uh, I, I thought about that. In Genesis 15, 16, now this is God talking to Abraham about 700 years before he tells them to go take that city. And what it says is, he says, for the sins, the Amorites, the Amorites are the people that live right there in Jericho and all that. He said, the sins of the Amorites do not yet warrant their destruction. He said, I'm going to give you that land and I'm going to let you take it from those people, but they're not as bad as they're going to be yet. But when they get as bad as they're going to get, I'm going to send you in to take that land. I'm going to send your people in, your descendants in, to take that land. So God waited on them 700 years to straighten up. And the Bible teaches us that every one of us are born with a conscience. We all know right from wrong inside of us. And we have basic morality. Every human being on this planet born like that. And they denied continually that light that God puts in everybody's heart to the point of sacrificing their own children. Taking their little children and sacrificing them to false gods. So, I mean, we're not talking about wonderful people here. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, anyway, let's uh, move on with our story. So, the, the, the back story to this is, you know, go back a little bit. When the Israelites first show up near the city of Jericho, they send a couple of guys into Jericho to check things out. And they come across this lady named Rahab. We'll talk about her more later. Now, she's got quite a reputation around town. But and look in Joshua 2... 9 and 10, here's what she's telling them. So to the two spies that Joshua sends into the city to kind of check things out and see how they are. And here's what she tells those spies. She says, I know the Lord, and she uses his personal name. This was the name of God that set him apart from all those false gods that they had back in there. And he said, I know the Lord has given you this land, she told him. We are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. You know why? Because they know they deserve judgment. That's why. People are afraid of God when they, when they know they're not right with Him. 
You know, God wants everybody to be right with Him. And He's made a way for that to happen freely, graciously, wonderfully loving God who gave His Son to die on the cross for us. And we can come freely and have our sin forgiven. But when we refuse that, people don't feel very good about it. You know, because... So, it, look what she says. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to those other kings. Those two, those two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River whose people you completely destroyed. Now, that, now listen to me now. This happened over 40 years ago and they're still shaking in their boots. They're scared to death of these people because they remember this. It's on everybody's mind. And there's another place in the Bible where it shows they were still talking about this 400 years later. It was such an amazing thing that God opened up the Red Sea and His people just passed through it. Well, I mean, you know, people that were there believed in it. You know, people back in those days. But uh, we, and we believe in it today. But, but look, y'all. By the time they arrive at, at the city, God's done done that again. You know, he this time with the with the red with the uh, the uh, what's the river? <laughs> the Jordan River. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> gotta remember stuff like that, man. You're a preacher, uh, but anyway, the so this time God did the same thing again, and he told he told them when when you pass through the Jordan River, you know, they had to cross over the Jordan River into the promised land. He said, I want you to take out 12 big stones out of the bottom of that river when I let you pass through on dry ground. Now, the, the rocks would have been out in the, the, the wilderness would have, would have been jagged and, you know, looked like rocks. But he said, when you cross over that river, I want you to take some of those smooth stones where the river has been passing over it for centuries and centuries and it's made the rock smooth. And I want you to take some rocks out of that river and I want you to set them up there and make a monument so when people of the land see this, they know what I've done and they remember that I opened up this Jordan River for you and made you pass by. So uh, he's telling, he told them that. And look in jo Joshua 4.24. And it says, talking about this, he said, So he did this, so all the nations of the Lord, all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful, so that you might fear the Lord your God forever. This is reverence for God. You know, this means that he actually, he, that he means something in our lives. You know, that he's not just there to help us when we get in a jam. You know, he's not just there to give us uh, something better than what we got right now, it, but, it, but it means to have some respect for Him. You know, and, and let me tell you this, y'all. If you don't respect God, you'll never see your need for a Savior. If you don't have reverence for God, if you don't see the holiness of God, you'll never recognize that you need a Savior. If God is just something or someone up there to help you when you get in trouble, you won't ever need to repent of sin. You won't ever need to feel the, the weight of that and feel the forgiveness, the need for that forgiveness. And see, God loves you and He has that waiting for you. Now, I want us to, let's get to the story and let's learn four lessons of when heaven shows up to bring walls down. Y'all, yeah. that's what happens. So to make, number one, make sure that we're on heaven's side. This is the most important lesson we're going to learn together, to make sure that we're on God's side. And y'all, if we're not, it may be our wall that's falling down. God, you know, look, look, look in Joshua 5, 13 through 15. So first of all, we want to make sure we're on His side. So, so before uh, Joshua heads out, into the promised land, look who shows up in Joshua 5, 13 through 15. It says, Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword. Some of your translations will have man capitalized because later in the passage we see that this is actually Jesus or God showing up 
before he came to earth. It says, and so Joshua, Joshua went up to him and asked him, are you for us or for our enemies? And look what he says, neither. He says, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? And then the commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy. And Joshua did so. See, in wherever the Bible says, as far as, uh, as I know, wherever it tells them to take off their sandals like that, and that they're on holy ground. That's God they're talking to. And you'll see this later, later in the story. So, so Joshua went up to him and said, Are you for us or are you for our enemies? And he says, uh, Are you a Democrat or a Republican? Yeah. Are, are, you a, are you a liberal or a conservative? Yeah. Are you for the Steelers or the Cowboys? Yeah. But see, Joshua could only see it from his little human standpoint. You know, and, and he, could, he thought this was just a battle between human beings. Y'all know this was for the glory of God. Amen. And whoever is not on God's side is the one. So he, he answers him. God says, neither. He says, I'm not on your side. You need to get on my side. That, that's what he's telling all of us. He said, you need to get on my side and make sure you stay on my side. I'm not here to do your will. I'm here to do my will. Said, so if you don't stay on my side, you're going to find out I'm against you too. So if there's one thing I wish I could say, if I had an opportunity, to, I'd say it to the, to the city of Memphis and to the body of Christ all across America. I wish we would quit dividing up over political lines. I wish we would. And I wish we would quit making a, assumptions. If you're on this side, you automatically assume things bad about the other side. And if you're on that side, you automatically assume that they can't really be good followers of the Lord Jesus Christ if they, if they follow that side. Y'all, that's, that, that's not what God wants His people to be thinking. And y'all, don't, don't think I'm the only one who's guilty of that. We all are. You know good and well we are. But we desperately need to quit voting for a party because we've always voted for a party. We need to do our very gut level best to read what God's Word says and find out what those parties believe and then vote according to this book right here and quit dividing us up over all that. See, that's our sacred responsibility to know what we're casting that vote for. You know, so... Anyway, Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? And so Joshua falls down and says, Tell me what you want me to do. See, God doesn't want us to automatically assume that we know. You know, that we know what to do. So Joshua is the commander. He's the commander in charge. And he realizes that before I can lead some other people somewhere, I better make sure myself that I'm submitted to God. I better get myself lined up with Him. So I better get myself under His authority so that I can bring other people under His authority. So the commander of the Lord's army, and y'all, the, the Bible throughout this whole Old Testament it's, it calls God the Lord of hosts. And that's a Lord of an angelic army. A mighty warrior army. And that's who this is. This is the Lord of angel armies. And so he says, he immediately says, take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy. Let's just make sure you understand who you're dealing with, Joshua. You know, let's, let's, let's make sure you understand to whom you are accountable to when, before we even start this thing. So as we continue into chapter 6, this is a continuation of the story. You know, the, the chapter divisions, you know, weren't in the Bible. They added them in later so that we could find stuff in them. Can you imagine if I told you this morning, turn in your Bibles to the part where it's in Joshua where it says that, you know, it's about the walls falling down from Jericho. 
You know, see, it'd be very difficult because, you know, just be honest, half y'all didn't even know there was a book of Joshua in, in the Bible. But, uh, but don't worry. When God, when you stand before God and he gives you an entrance exam into heaven, it's only got one question on it. What are you doing with Jesus Christ? Now, we can all, we can all pass that one. That's, that's what, but anyway. So, number two, make sure we believe God. Now, just make sure we really believe him because the Bible says without, without faith, it's impossible to, to please God. In, in Joshua 6, 2, as it continues the story, then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. And so this word see means to see with spiritual eyes because it hasn't happened yet. You know, and God's talking like it's done happened. But he's telling him, you know, if you will look with spiritual eyes so you can see things. If, if you look with just normal sight all the time, you're not going to see anything from God. If you will only believe, then you see. But see, the world says we, seeing is believing. God says believing is seeing. Yeah. You know, it works just the opposite. But see, if you can see with spiritual eyes, this world is not dark. Y'all, I know, I know we got problems for sure. Big, big, big problems. Yep. But when you see with spiritual eyes, you know who's in charge of it. And you know where it's all going. Yep. And you know who holds your hand and who's going to get you through it. But you got to see with spiritual eyes because you look at this world and it looks pretty dark and discouraging and all. But, but uh, you know, you've, God, God is with you in every part of your life. Y'all, and if we're looking with spiritual eyes, we see him all around us involved in everything. And he, look, he says, I have delivered. Now, God is talking like it's already happened. And this is written as something that's completed action. See, God can do that with God. It's already a done deal. Yeah. He said, I have delivered this land into your hands. And see, Joshua, y'all, he's... He believes God. He's had 40 years to think this over, for one thing. Remember, before, when they first came out of Egypt, God told 12, He said, pick you out 12 spies and send them in there to spy out that land that I'm going to give you. And they came back, and, and 10 of those guys said, oh, we can't do it. Oh, there's no way, man. Those... Those guys are so big, we look like grasshoppers to them. But two of them said, no, we can take that land. We can do it because God said we can do it. And, and that was, one of them was Joshua. And the other one was Caleb. And so Joshua, now 40 years later, he believes God. He still believes God. You know, he was one of them that believed. And because they, because they wouldn't, go into the land, the others wouldn't. God said, okay, you've been roaming around spying out that land for 40 days. I'm going to make you wander in the wilderness 40 years for it. But see, they refused to believe him. They, they, they didn't see with those spiritual eyes. And look at, look at 1 Peter 1, 8. And y'all, this, this is glorious. This is wonderful. This is, this is true, and you'll find this in your own life. 1 Peter 1.8, it says, Though you have not seen Him, you love Him, speaking of Jesus. And though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him. And filled with inexpressible, uh, inexpressible and glorious joy. He says... You know, look at the joy and happiness that comes into your life when you believe. Y'all, such joy that, that you can't even express it. Are you experiencing that? Yeah. Are you so joy, overjoyed in your life that you can't even put words on all of it? Yeah. If not, are you sure that you've been born again? Right. And I'm not saying you're not. It's not for me to say anyway. But just, I just want you to be sure. 
No, because you can be. God's door is open. He, he's, he's not holding anybody. He's not forbidding anybody to come. He said, whosoever will, let them come freely right now. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You know, there's no shame in maybe I thought I was and I'm really not. There's no shame in that. Just come get saved. Just come and believe. Number three, make sure we follow God's directions. Y'all, if we want walls to come down, we got to follow God's directions. You know, we start thinking, well, how are we going to get these walls to fall down? Let's Google that. You know. let's, let's find a, a, a YouTube video. You know, and, then, and then we say, well, YouTube takes too long. Let's go to TikTok. Then you get a short, short little video. Let's get, a, let's get a team of consultants to come in. Yeah, that ought to bring them down. But uh, let, let's try that. All, all these things we use, y'all, are great and all that, but they are no substitute for getting alone with God and getting in His Word into your life every day and following God's directions in your life. Y'all, I'm afraid we've made it so easy to be spoon-fed through so many different things that, and, and a lot of them are really good now, don't get me wrong, but from the internet where you don't have to do anything yourself. Just sit back and read. But, but there's so much garbage people take in as well. And you never really learn to get with God and let Him feed you personally. Y'all, once you get where you can feed yourself, then you're ready to feed other people. Look, in Joshua 6, 3 through 5, it says, March around the city once with all the our men. He's, he's telling them exactly what you, God wants them to do. God is telling them, I want you to do it exactly like this. It says, March around the city with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a, a loud shout, like we sang about, shout to the Lord. Then, then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in. God wanted them to follow His directions exactly. And He told them it would work if they would follow it exactly. See, we live in a world where, you know, everybody's an expert. Everybody, everybody's an expert because, you know, they, they feel like an expert. You know, I got this many likes on, on my post and all that. I'm, I'm something. You know, but when it comes to life, y'all, people think that their opinions are, are just as good as God's. Well, well, I think this. So? So? But, y'all, we've got to get it into our heads that this word right here is just like a mathematical equation, like 2 plus 2 equals 4. You know, well, I believe it's 5, but it's still 4. You know, I feel like it's 5, but it's still 4. That's too narrow-minded. You know, y'all, y'all are too narrow-minded. But it's still four. Y'all, you're looking at somebody who until very recently thought uh, speed limit signs were just suggested signs, uh, suggested speeds. You know, and, and straighten me out about that. <laughs> but, but, but look at this, look at this quote. Mike and Vicky gave me a book that's fantastic, and uh, it's a, written by a guy who's writing about a German martyr in World War II that stood up to the Nazis. You know, the Nazis were the most racist uh, world that there ever has seen, and they would have taken over the world and made the whole world white. That was their goal, an Aryan nation. But, but the United States of America that people are blasting so bad as being a racist country, and I know we got our issues, y'all, but America stopped them. America stood up and stopped them. But here's what this guy, Eric Metaxas, who wrote the book about the germ guy, said about 
the, the, the German pastor who was about the only one who stood up against the, the Nazis. And here's what he said about truth, about what's right and true. He says, he understood that what is right and true is never merely right and true for some, but is inevitably right and true for all, or it's not right and true at all. Y'all, that's a good statement. He's saying truth is truth. God's Word is truth. And, and we've got to settle that. That God's Word gets the final say about everything. So, so let's recap real quick. Make sure we're on heaven's side. Make sure we believe God. Make sure we follow God's directions. And number four, make sure we are faithful in the victory. And y'all, this gets tricky. Because when in, in victory is usually when we let our defenses down. That's usually, you know, when... That's usually when we tend to coast a little bit. We tend to relax. We tend to lighten up on what God's Word says and just kind of say, well, yeah, I'll get around to that one of these days and all of that. But look, let's just read through this together and I'm trying to finish up here. Uh, Joshua 6, 15 through 20, it says, On the seventh day they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times. So far, so good. They started out well. They're doing exactly what God told them to do. He says, In the same manner, except on that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. And the, at the last count that I know anything about in the Bible, they had 600,000 plus men of war. So they had uh, at least 600,000 to surround the city. And they give that shout all at once. And so in verse 17, it says, The city and all that are in it, he's, he's telling them, in it are to be devoted to the Lord. So only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent. Now she, y'all, she turned to God and helped the spies out. In other words, she got on God's side. Yeah. And God spared her and more on that a little bit later. But he said, but, but listen what he told him in verse 18. He says, but keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. See, God was very specific about don't touch some of those treasures. In verse 19, He says, All the gold and the silver and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into His treasury. See, He said, you know, he's telling them, God's part comes first. Yeah. Y'all, that's, that's a big one to get over, especially for people in America who think, all, all the money I have is mine. No, it's not. It's all God's. Yeah. He lets you keep 90% of it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, see, they, they, he's, they're going to have plenty of gold and silver later. But the first part always goes to the Lord. Verse 20 says, When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. At the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. So they, it, it happened just like God said. But they weren't faithful in that victory. Go over to the next chapter. As we close, in Joshua 7, 10 and 11, see Joshua is down on his face before God. And because they have, they took some of that money and treasure and all that they weren't supposed to take. And even though God gave them that victory, when they went to the next town, it was just a little bitty nothing town. And they said, oh, we'll, we can take that one. Look what we just did. And so they, they said, oh, just send a few people up there. 
And they got, how can I say this politely? Nice. For church. <laughs> they, got, they got spanked. Yes. Yes, they did. And so, so Joshua is on his face before God. He's laying there groveling in the dirt, feeling, saying, what's wrong, God? We thought we were getting a victory. And God says, the first thing to do, stand up, Joshua. Get up on your feet. This is simple. Y'all sinned. You just did wrong. You just didn't do what I told you to do. I told you don't take any of that. And y'all took some of it. So there's a big long thing about how they found out who took it and all that. But see, here's the amazing thing, y'all. Even though they, they lost that next battle... See, when they got everything right, God restored every blessing back to them, just like He's always done a thousand times throughout the Old Testament and all that. When, when God's people strayed away from Him into terrible sin, He always forgave them. He was always willing to take them back. But back to, the, back to about Rahab. Now, y'all, Rahab is obviously... Not a what we call a, a a good moral lady. I mean, she's a she's a woman, woman of the evening, whatever you call them. Uh, but but look what happens. See, she turned to God, and God doesn't care what you've done. There's nobody beyond His forgiveness. There's there's no one you know that can't be forgiven if they just turn to Him. Look in Matthew one five. Look who shows up in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You see Rahab. That's Rahab. And look at James. It mentions her three times in the New Testament. In James 2.25 it says, In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute. I guess there was another Rahab, another woman named Rahab, and she said, You make sure you save prostitute after her because I ain't no prostitute. But anyway. Uh, uh, anyway. That, that was silly. <laughs> but anyway, they got her. He mentions how faithful she was. And look, in Hebrews 11, it says, by faith the prostitute. But, but what, it, what it does, y'all, it shows us the glory of God. There's not a one of us in this room is any better than Rahab. None of us. And the, the amazing thing is, is that the grace of God just keeps on, just keeps on calling out after generation, after generation, after generation. And God is calling today, Lord Jesus, as they were nailing him to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. He knows that some of the, a bunch of that sin, we didn't realize how bad it was. We didn't realize what we were doing. And even if we did, he's still saying, forgive them. Forgive us. Forgiveness is available. So what do you do? You just turn to God and say, say, Jesus, I believe. Please come into my life and save me. And people think, can it really be that simple? Yes. It is. That's all you've got to do is believe Him. The Bible says God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son and whoever believes in Him will not perish. Just believe Him. That's all. It's by grace. It's a gift. But to receive a gift, you've got to believe it's there. Right? So just take it. And God will change your life if you will follow Him. Y'all, you'll, you'll never be the same. Now, if you want to stay the same, you're not ready to receive the gift. But He wants to give you the gift and just let Him do the work of changing you. You can't change yourself. None of us could. So He's saying, you know, just, just take the gift and then let God do His work in your heart. Now, He won't take anything out that's not good for you. I mean, He won't take anything out that's good for you. Uh, he'll only take out the harmful stuff. Yeah. There's the stuff that brings the heartaches anyway. 
So what's your decision today? Are you going to accept it, that gift? And if, you, if you'd like to talk about it some more, after, as soon as we're over, just come to the front right here and, we, and we'll be happy to talk with you about it.